Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'm live here with Harpo. He is an engineer that works at Futo full-time on a project called Polycentric. He was a fellow last year. I'll leave a link to the fellows program down below. Where we pay you to come here and work on a project of your, of your choosing that increases tech freedom in some cool way. And uh, we just thought we'd talk about what's going on. So thank you for coming by. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Lewis. Okay, so as I've been saying with some of the recent videos I've been doing on Twitter, and as Eli the computer guy has put it really, really well over the past uh, few weeks, regardless of whether you like or dislike Elon Musk as a character, whether you like or dislike his political opinions or what he's doing, in some way what we're doing is we're replacing the old guard with a new dictator. One of the things that I've heard Tim Pool say, it's, it's surprising how much people who often hate his content agree, is you essentially have traded one author authority for another billionaire that can say whether or not somebody can or cannot be on the platform at their whim. When people like, when Alex Jones was banned, the reason given wasn't, this speech was found in a court of law to be bad, therefore this breaks this rule, therefore you are gone. It was, my kid died in my arms, I don't like him, he's gone. And same thing with other, then you saw what happened over the past few days where they're saying, if you're linking to other social media sites, we are going to delete your account. At the end of the day, if you genuinely if you genuinely truly want tech freedom, you cannot be at the whims of a, of a dictator, even if you think it is a benevolent dictator, even if they appear to be on your side at the time. And that's kind of where this very interesting project that he has created comes into play. So he has created something called Polycentric, which is a very cool project here that meets a lot of the uh, Fudo goals, which you can't see on screen because I screwed up my browser transform. Oh yeah, there we go. It is forget. Yeah? Okay, there we go. So this is a distributed open source social network. And the idea with a lot of the projects that we have here is to have something with something called sovereign identity, meaning you are not logging on to some central server with a username and a password, but rather you own your identity with a private public key. Can you talk a little bit about how this works here? Because you've actually made this fairly idiot proof. Because like 99% of the time when we're talking about private public key type of stuff or sovereign identity for a login system, you have people like giving their private key away publicly and all that other stuff. So you've come up with a really interesting little GUI here that makes it very easy for even me to import my own profile. Which yeah, I mean, with, with most projects, um, you know, people managing their own keys has definitely uh, not gone very well. Uh, you know, PGP has been around for a long time as kind of, you know, the, the OG way of encrypting your emails. And uh, people always found that kind of like very difficult to use, you know, the steps to like, generate your key and then plug it into your client and uh, you know, ensure they're backed up correctly, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, with this, um, you just open it, it generates the key, saves in the background uh, in your browser, and like from the user's perspective, uh, you know, there's, there's just zero setup. Um, you, know, you don't even need to like register for an account or anything, you just generate the key, it's saved, you're done. And then when you want to like synchronize it with your phone or something, you just um, send a file to yourself, open it, and you're done. Yeah, you so know, people, people know how to back up files. They can put it in Dropbox or whatever they want. Yeah, so I, yeah. I had my, my little polycentric profile file. I saved it, and then I brought it back up, and now I had, like, my picture is back here. Oh, okay, we have, uh, the, the <laughs> okay, I'm getting Yeah, you have some uh, interesting content there. Okay, uh, we were testing things. Uh, okay, so anyway. Some things that I should have probably deleted. We were testing this to see how it worked. Uh, the internet gets worse with each passing year. Uh, we have you, you, all your posts come back. So how does this system work? So let's say that, hypothetically speaking, let's say that you uh, are mad at something that I posted, which is, I imagine, what those first few posts up there were to test. If you're mad at something I post, you created this, uh, what is your level of power over the system so that I would not be able to post things like that? Yeah, so, uh, well, we can... Uh the easiest thing to do is draw this in contrast to like a, a federated system. So usually how federation is implemented, uh, kind of like emails is a big, you know, the most common example of, of this. Uh, you know, you sign up for Gmail or you sign up for, for Hotmail or, or Yahoo Mail or what have you. And then, you know, you can still communicate to people that are on different servers, but, but ultimately, when, you know, when you sign up for Gmail, um, you know, they control that identity. And, um, you know, federation kind of works really well in that, you know, you can use all these BP resources in the cloud, you know, use Google's data centers, those 40 gigabit links, that kind of stuff, and, uh, you know, really, really ensure that the, the performance is there and the engineering cadence is there. But uh, this cost is really high in that, like, if, if you need to change your email address or something, uh, it's very expensive in that you have to go and kind of message, 
you know, everyone that wants to, you know, I have to update that everywhere, everywhere it was. And, um, and so a system like Mastodon is also like that, which is kind of the main Twitter alternative that's like open source um, in that <laughs> you can pick, uh, you can- They saw what was posted, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think uh, s some people might- We were testing the limits of the censorship resistance uh, in the beginning with uh, ridiculous shit, sorry. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, proof of concept anyways. <laughs> proof of concept. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, so in those systems, you know, Mastodon is also kind of like that, where you sign up for like an instance and, you know, you can, uh, you know, store your posts on that server and then they communicate them to the other servers in the background. Um, so the difference that we have here is that uh, instead of being on one server, uh, it's on multiple servers uh, at the same time. So if you, if you have your profile, you say, I want to use this instance, this instance, and this instance, and then, you know, your identity lives there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll pay attention. There, not. It's distracting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so like, let's say, okay, you, you you see this and you say, what what is this shit? I want this off my platform. I'm Elon Musk. I am. I don't want this here. I'm like new new dictator. Are you able to delete that? Yeah. So if you if you run a server, um, you obviously you know you're you're kind of all the messages in the system are kind of being broadcasted to the public. You know, the server operator can see what they are because again, they're like, they're Twitter feeds. They're intended to be public mostly. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the, the server operator can like choose to stop hosting that content. They could choose not to host a specific post or they could choose not to host, you know, all of the posts uh, for, for, for an identity. And, you know, as a, like a server operator, especially if things are public, uh, you really have to have the ability to not host certain things that you don't want, you know, at, at the very least because of legal requirements. Um, so the person that's hosting a server can say, I don't want this here, but your content will still remain on other servers. Yeah, so like when you set up your profile, you just add another server, and then uh, as long as like one of the servers you s you've set up is still hosting your content, um, then you know from from another, from the other person's perspective, the people following you, you know their clients will just see, oh, you know Lewis's stuff is on this other server, and we're gonna get it from there. So um, you know, just as as long as someone is willing to host it, um, and this is kind of a very very important detail because like you know. Frequently, especially you know, in a lot of these systems, um, federated servers like go down permanently. People choose to run them for a bit, a couple of years, and they decide to stop. So the, the content, you know, that's just like the happy case of, of when everything's gone. It wasn't even, not even malicious. Just you know, people wanted to stop running it. So um, in this, it seems seems like it's more like a usenetish approach where you have multiple servers that can choose to host something or not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're basically we're trying to get a lot of the properties you would expect of like a peer-to-peer -peer system, kind of like torrents, but in a way that is like really efficient for these small messages that are, you know, like, like tweets. Like, you know, with a torrent, uh, if you choose to seed half of a torrent, um, you know, it, it, the system just works. Like, you know, you, you're, uh, you get, lend your bandwidth to uploading half the torrent, and then um, when you choose not to have, you host the other half, um, people get it from somewhere else, you know, as long as, as, long as someone's hosting it. Um, and, you know, torrents are like really great for, for large amounts of data. Um, but they are relatively inefficient for, or, or there's, there's not really a good way to deal with like lots of small pieces of data that are updated all the time. There's kind of a lot of, lot of overhead there. Um, an example of this also is like, you know, when you have, at least when you use like the fully distributed type of torrents with, uh, with DHTs, you know, when you do that uh, hash table lookup to find out where stuff is, that's kind of a, a pretty expensive operation, you know. So, you know, when you start a torrent, it takes, especially if you're just using the DHT, it takes, you know, a second or so to start. And, um, you know, if each post was its own torrent or something, that'd be pretty incredibly That would uh, be very tedious and aggravating. Um, All right, so let's see. How can you explore stuff here? And I'm going to click before I do the screen capture this time, for obvious reasons. All right, let's see. Make sure that... Stop, shrink you. You got click... I got clickbaited. No cat here. Oh, I, I clickbaited the shit out of you. Yeah, there, there is no cat in this video. I had no thumbnail, so I just used the cat. It was his idea, though. Right. No, let's, let's see. So you can click explore up here. And when you click explore, what is it that you're seeing? Because you said that there are different servers, and different servers can host different content. So when you click explore, what exactly are you seeing here? Yeah, so there's kind of this distinction no, of... Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, not again. Anyway, so... All right. Uh, <laughs> well, that hit the feed button. <laughs> I think I had myself in my own feed. Yeah, that, that's just your own content, you know. Um, really, some of the uh, worst content on the platform, <laughs> I think. Um, 
They're probably the worst, actually, so far. Yeah, um, yeah so, um, you know, with, with, with these kind of systems, um, you know, if you were just, like, going out and, like, only following people that you already knew about, then, like, spam and stuff is, is not really an issue. And that, like, you know, if, if, you're, if you go on your website and say, here I am on Polycentric, um, and I, I click that directly, then, you know, obviously I intended to get your content. There's no, like, spam issue there if, if you know, if I chose to subscribe to you. But for, for most other content, there's, there's a lot of other things where, like, especially on social media, where you're seeing stuff that you didn't necessarily directly opt into. So, you know, if you're, if you're reading through posts from people you're not following or seeing stuff recommended to you, like, that content has to come from somewhere. And a lot of that stuff is fundamentally like a, a value judgment in that, you know, some algorithm or some, some individual kind of chose to, you know, rec you know recommend certain content to, to, to the users of, of the platform. And uh, it's also just like, it's uh, really, really quite difficult to um, have value judgments be a, a, a purely technical thing. Uh, really, there's, there's a human in the loop kind of deciding uh, at some level if something is, is good or spam or not. You yeah, know, like so I noticed when I log into Twitter, I see posts from people that I did not follow, but that are also I, that stuff that I just find annoying and that raises my blood pressure. And eventually that's why I, I quit. Yeah, well, that's, that's um, what, what Twitter is choosing to recommend to you. Um, and really, like, if, if a recommendation system is, is good, like, it really increases the value of a system, but there's also, like, a huge amount of power in recommendations uh, in that, you know, you can choose not to... You can choose to encourage certain things or choose to discourage certain things. Um, so how does this? How is this exactly so like when you hit explore? Like so, with, with uh, what we did is that like we, we basically we want to be able to take advantage of the technologies that are available to do uh, recommendations and, and have some kind of human value judgments here, but in a way where the person doing the recommending doesn't have very much power uh, or le or less power than than they naively would. So like when you configure multiple servers in Polycentric. Um, each of these different servers uh, can choose to recommend things to you however they want. And, uh, you know, in the UI, it'll say, like, you know, who recommended something to you? You know, it was, in this case, uh, srv1.polycentric.ir recommends it to you. Um, and if you had another server configured, it would say, oh, this other server is also recommending some stuff to me, uh, and, you know, however they choose to. And uh, if you decide that, so you can kind of, like, pick... Uh, who you want to be recommending things to you. Uh, if you think one site, or if you think one operator is going to do a better job, um, you know, or you, you, know, agree, you agree with what they're recommending more, then you could choose, choose to use them instead. So it gives but, you a little bit more of a degree of control over it than with a centralized platform. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, you can kind of, you basically you can kind of separate, you know, your, uh, your posting of content and your consuming of content from uh, this kind of meta level stuff of like, you know, the, the exploration area, um, which again, I think like fundamentally, especially the old spam, like there has to be some filtering somewhere and pretty much no one wants overt spam. So, you know, that's likely to be filtered everywhere. But um, there's a lot of gray areas um, around what you might want to recommend or what or might not. And one, one of the important details here is like, you can have multiple versions of these systems operating at the same time. So, you know, instead of just like, oh, I tried this one and I'm switching to this one and then this one where it's like all or nothing, uh, you can be like, you know, I just want to try, you know, all three of these. And, um, you know, you don't, you don't have to like fully, you know, one, one of the uh, details we're trying to get here is to, to get away from these like, oh, like these Boolean decisions of like, I'm using this one or this one, you know, same thing with like where your stuff is hosted. Um, you know, it's not I'm choosing to host here or I'm cho choosing to host here. It's like, you know, let's just do them all at the same time. And, and that way, like, that really, like, reduces the cost of using new providers for things. You know, you don't have to. It's not a big commitment. Um, how do you log out? How do you log out? Yeah, there's no uh, log out button. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing about, about sovereign, the sovereign identity stuff. So, like, when you see this, this website here, like, this website is, like, a purely client side thing. The server, the, like, polystream.io, the server does nothing. Just think of it like a web browser. And it's like, you know, there, there's a desktop version of this too, which you can, you, you can run, and it's exactly the same thing, just, just on the desktop. And, um, you know, this is just like an interface that you're using to explore the network. Um, you know, the fact that you're using the, the client that just happens to be at the domain is, is totally disconnected. So, like, you know, when you log out, um, 
that's deleting my profile. Yeah, you, you delete your profile or like switch, switch identities. Um, no, with the persistent storage element, if let's say, like I, I was able to import my profile and it's then grabbing all the data off of the server. But let's say every server decides to delete, delete all my stuff. Uh, all of, is that still stored in the persistent storage within the, the browser app? Yeah, so you can, um, we're kind of trying to go with like this local first approach. Um, there's this kind of uh, nice detail where um, the stuff that makes stuff work well offline is also the same stuff, can, is also very similar to the stuff that can make things work well in like a distributed setting. And um, so like when you write a post in Polycentric, the first thing it does is like it saves you know, into your local storage. Uh, or in this case, it's, it's technically indexed DB. It's an overloaded term in, this, in the case of the web. Uh, and then on, on the desktop, you know, it goes into uh, the database. So like, you know, if every server you're connected to decides or goes down um, or chooses not asso to associate with you, like your content is all still stored locally. So you just, you know, you can add another server and then, you know, it'll be uploaded there. So um, let's like say automatically in the background. So I took that file from my home backup because I didn't, I never had that set up on this work computer since I just took it out of the box. So when I take that polycentric profile file, I can, uh, un well, unfortunately, in this freaking case, I could see all my old shit posts, but little shit. But, but anyway, I could see all the old posts. But like, is it then grabbing uh, the moment I connect? Is it then grabbing all of my posts off the server and then storing it locally here? Yeah. So as so, let's say every server deleted everything there. I I, I now have a copy stored locally. Should probably delete before I leave here, but but uh, that's all stored locally. Yeah, yeah, it's all, all stored locally. Um, and the other nice thing about this detail is, like, also for all the people you're following, like in the background, the app will download, you know, those people, and then, um, you know, if you're like on an airplane or something, like, you can reply to people, you can browse all the people you're all, you know, all the content you're following, um, and you know, these are the kind of like features that like. Pretty much no applications. You know, it's very rare. Everything's kind of cloud connected now. Everything is on the server. You have to be online all the time. Yeah. Like I like you know, the idea of like things not having to necessarily be online to see everything, or at the very least to see my own posts. Because it's it's one thing if a website decides to ban me. Like fine, I get it. Bygones be bygones. You don't like me. That's absolutely that, that's absolutely fine. But it's the idea that all of my stuff, if I was relying on you for the hosting, is now all gone. That that sucks. Yeah. So, I mean. Um, you know, it, sometimes it's been said that like everything, you know, you know, stuff survives forever on the internet. But this is, um, it's kind of really not true. Just like as as sites go down, as uh, policies change, uh, as, as people stop hosting things, you know, over, you know, ten twenty years, like most things on the internet are, you know, I you know all, every every all the time I look back and, and see stuff and it's just like it's just gone forever. Um, you know, with the archives. Um, Oh yeah, I see a comment that says this is very S SSB inspired. Yeah, uh, like Secure Scuttlebutt um, uh, was a was an old project Let me that close the um, door. really kind of inspired things. I don't. Um, know. I did close. It's just really loud. Yeah, it's just oh, loud. Okay. It's fine. Um, oh, um, what differentiates Polycentric from Manyverse? So I don't recall. Is Manyverse um, the Scuttlebutt one, or is it the um, uh, is it the, the Mastodon one? Oh, let's um, see. There, there's two things that sound similar. Uh, oh yeah, many versus the the one that's similar to, or the, the scale one. Uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, no. Um, so one of the things that um, so scale by kind of a, a couple details that um, made it made it kind of difficult uh, to to work very well in practice. Um, and that the the one thing scuttlebutt uh, had an issue with is that it didn't really support multiple devices very well, um, and the second thing is that it it kind of expected you to have all of the data for a feed or for for someone you were following in order for it to, to work correctly. So you know, as you um, followed more people, or if someone like posted a ton of stuff, like you see some people on Twitter and they follow 100,000 people, 100,000 people, um, you know, in those kind of cases, uh, Scuttlebot would get would get quite slow, um, and then if you wanted to use it like uh, you know, on your, if you want to use the same identity, like on your phone and on your desktop, um, you know, the only way to really do something like that was to either have two accounts or to like have a server manage it for you, and then you know, put your phone and your desktop both connect to a server which manages your identity. Whereas here, it's just you have your profile file, so you don't have to connect to anything to manage your identity. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Um, yeah, we've kind of like uh, the the data model is is kind of kind of similar, except that it's it's connected to. Um, 
we've kind of extended the, the, the Scuttlebutt core data model with uh, something called uh, vector clocks. So we kind of, um, you know, basically your different devices without being able to talk to each other um, kind of all have um, their like, own internal counters for how many posts they've made. And then, you know, as the devices become aware of each other's content, um, they reference, you know, the, the state of the other devices and their own feed. And so, you know, by getting a message, you can kind of see where all of the devices are. True, that was annoying um, about SSB. Every, actually, every user was really a device key. Yeah, that, yeah. That sounds much less convenient. Uh, than basically, like, when I looked at Scuttlebutt, uh, and when you look at Scuttlebutt, just, like, all the properties that it has are, like, they're just the properties that you obviously would want to have, like, in, in, a, in, in a system. Or, you know, the, the ones that stand out to me, it's like, oh, it works offline, it's, it's sovereign. Uh, it really doesn't depend on, you know, servers. Everything's pretty trustless. Um, it's just those, uh, those couple uh, design choices, um, I, I think, are one of the reasons it just didn't, didn't really take off. Um, you know, people really expect, um, people expect things to load in, you know, 100 milliseconds. They expect things to work on multiple devices, you know, seamlessly. Um, yeah, and then, you know, also, like, in, in the way the, the messages in the protocol are constructed, they're kind of designed where, you know, you can rent, you can get a, a good uh, view of a feed without downloading everything. Like, you know, it's you make a request to the server, and then kind of within a couple of round trips, you should be able to have just the information you need to, to actually render the profile. So um, one of the things that we've talked about here is the idea of, let's say, having a social media a video platform or anything like that where you have your own comment system, you have your own recommendation system, and one of the things that Aaron's mentioned is using this as a protocol for it. So this is very cool as because it's as a like a more decentralized alternative to Twitter where you kind of have a little bit more fine-tuned control over who you follow, who gets banned, who can speak, and what's recommended. But how can this be used for something like, let's say, a recommendation engine for a video platform or as a common system storage for a platform or anything like that? Yeah, um, so the, the core of the protocol is really, really quite generic. Uh, right now, like most of the work is kind of specialized into to UIs and kind of recommendation stuff around um, the microblogging case. Um, but if you want to do something else, you just make another message type. The servers, like naively, don't really care uh, what the data is as long as it follows the basic, like integrity information. Um, and then, but at that point, you you do need to do kind of special work to make sure that like. You know, when we're doing recommendations, like, you know, the way you recommend stuff for videos is a little bit different than how you do it for, for Twitter. Uh, but you know, like the, like the integrity information, the synchronization information, um, that stuff can all be can all be very generic. And like, you know, I post my comment, it gets uploaded to one server, and the like, the other servers could could kind of download it and like use that for their own recommendations or whatever if if they wanted to. So um, it, like, would an interesting use case for this be the ability to have numerous different recommendation engines for, let's say, YouTube? You know, I still watch YouTube, but if I wanted a different recommendation system for my videos, having being able to subscribe to different servers here and different groups and be able to see what other people like? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're kind of uh, thinking about these, these cases going to the future. Like, I'd really like to use the, the protocol for, because again, the core, the core is pretty, a pretty generic concept, uh, using it for a lot of other stuff. Scuttlebutt was pretty cool about this and that you could like, Manage Git repos on, on Scuttlebutt, right? You didn't have to use GitHub or anything. You could just put your stuff in a feed, and other people could could synchronize. Um, and you know, we kind of intend to go down the case of like, you know, adding some messages that are opt, you know tailored towards like synchronizing device settings, because this, this is one of the things that uh, I kind of want is to be able to, you know, like have settings in an app that are, um, you know, all integrity check where the server can't mess with it at all. Or, or I'm not tied to a particular one, but also, um, you know, have two different phones, you know, get my, my app settings. Um, is this an open source project? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, fully open source. The, um, the source is on the, the Fudo GitLab. We want the um, cat, we want the cat, we want the cat. That was clickbait. Sorry, bro. Uh, does it use ActivityPub? Um, no, so this is, uh, this is like very, uh, a pretty disjoint project from, from ActivityPub. Um, yeah, so ActivityPub, again, they're, they're kind of using the, uh, the like, standard federation model, which, um, you know, really, really gives the server operators a lot, a lot of power. Um, like, one of the other differences here is that, like, the identities in, in the system are, are fully sovereign. You know, they're, they're cryptographic identifiers. So what are the powers that the ActivityPub people have that, we, you, that you don't have on Polycentric, that the server owners don't have on Polycentric? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the biggest one is, like, uh, someone on ActivityPub, 
uh, could just choose to stop hosting your content, or they could go down because they didn't pay their server bill. I, that's like the big, that's the biggest one. The other thing is like they could like they really control the identity, even if you make an account. Like they could post as you, they could you know edit what you said. Um, yeah, I don't think that's very common, but it's it's within their power. This, this is me um, being an idiot, but I remember like in the, before you said that server uh, on polycentric server operators would have some sort of power over what was hosted on their server. How is that different from, let's say, somebody on ActivityPub being able to say, uh, uh, to edit or delete your content? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so uh, the main difference is that with, with Polycentric, because of the, the way the cryptography is done, uh, if you choose not to um, store a message, when a user is consuming the feed, they can see that that message is missing, and they have a, a proof that it's not there. Um, so. You know, in a different system, you might be able to delete something, and then the users wouldn't even know that it was gone. Um, with this, it's like you know, the the client sees that the message is gone, and then it automatically knows, like, oh, the server didn't give this message to me. I'm gonna go get it from this other place. So, like, is the difference between me saying I banned this person versus just you know Stalin, Nikolai Yezhoving somebody, and this person never existed? Yeah, it's like they can't you know they can't just totally uh, remove you, um, or, or at the very least, like when people are when people are consuming your feed. If a server chooses not to host a message, and again, that's within like you know they should be able to choose not to host things. But yeah, the idea um, is that they should the, the client should know that something's missing, yeah. and be able to choose to go elsewhere if they want the unmoderated, God knows whatever. Well, well, importantly, like the the user really shouldn't have to do anything. It's just you know it's not on this server. You know, Lewis said it, Lewis's client said that they're on this other server, um, and then like. Ideally, you know, you shouldn't even notice if you know one of one of two servers decides to um, remove something, because um, really, there's like a lot of this, like the cost of switch. Like, if people have to do things to kind of circumvent, um, you know, some manual intervention to circumvent, um, you know, something being censored. That's kind of like, in practice, that's that's a lot of work. You know, most people kind of won't. Um, you know, they won't go Google to find out where, where the new address is or whatever, and you know, it might, they're not going to spend a couple minutes you know, when they just want to browse their feed, especially if it's just someone they're following. So one of the things that's happened on YouTube that's absolutely driven me insane is there are times where I post a comment on my own video, and then sometimes let's say I view it from a different browser or I do, and I'm not logged in. My own comment doesn't show up in my own video. So it's not even like I chose to, because a lot of people think that I ban, there are certain comments that I ban, but there's a ton that I don't. People will assume that I'm banning them. And sometimes on YouTube, my own comments don't show up in my own content. Which you'd figure, like, my own comment, if I didn't curse, should show up in my own content. And, I, and there's no way for the user to know the message, that this message was deleted or hid by a system, which is shadow banning. So, like, how, how does that functionally work to the user here? If they're connected to a server and there is a certain client that, you know, and that server decided to delete somebody's message, like, how would I see that on my client and my feed? Yeah, I mean, so right now, uh, the UI around this is, is not, you know, as good as it could be, but... Potential. Um, yeah, I mean, potentially, potential. Uh, ideally, in line, it would show that, like, oh, you know, message 103 or something is missing, you know, between this one and this one, because, you know, you, you could see those. Uh, right now, it's just like, oh, you posted 100 things and only 99 are here. You know, it won't tell you in the UI which one is gone right now. But, but like, the, pot the potential exists to add that in once, you know, we're done adding everything Yeah, I'll just else. be like, oh, sorry, we couldn't find this. Or, That's cool. You know, something no, like so that. at least you know that something's missing and to go somewhere else. Because, like, I, I mean, I could, I didn't Well, understand. again, when you say go somewhere else, like... Um, you know, if you've set up multiple servers on your profile, like they shouldn't need to go anywhere else. The client, the client will just in the background be like, "Oh, I didn't get it." You know, just like a torrent, right? Like, you know, when you're when you're downloading something and someone doesn't have a piece of the data, you don't you don't go to a new website to try to find, uh, you know, where it is or whatever. You just your client just is like, "Oh, they don't have it. I'm getting it from the other server." I, I hate shadow it. banning. It should have some sort of indication that shadow banning has happened, so you're not there talking to yourself. True. Yes, that is that has been in, that is incredibly frustrating, and I think the entire point behind something like that is to demoralize the crap out of the people leaving the comments, rather than just delete their comments so that they don't so that they just lose their mind. Maybe that's part of it. That's, yeah. That's so nice. I mean, there's some questions about bots here. Like, um, yeah. So I mean, bots are are kind of like a, a hard area to deal with. Like, I think there's a lot of bots that are are kind of valid. They're valid bots that you know, like some weather bot or a news bot or whatever. Um, you know, the real difference is, the, the real thing is, you know, do, do I want the content or not? So kind of like in this design, we're, we're trying to go with, um, like if I'm intentionally following something, you know, it should really just, just always, um, the client should just always be able to, be able to find it. Uh, the bots are more of a, a danger in like, you know, even if I like intentionally follow a spam bot, like, 
you know, I wanted to follow it. I should be able to. Um, but, you know, the, the spam and bots are really more of an issue in, like, the recommended feed. So, like, oh, like, on the Explore page, that's all, like, recommended stuff, basically. Or, like, oh, you know, you should follow this guy. Like, that's also um, kind of freeform stuff. And, you know, spam, spam could definitely be an issue there. And so the, the kind of the servers have the ability to, you know, they have full control over what gets on that recommended page. And if they choose not to uh, host spam, then uh, it won't show up there. And, and, you know, they have the power to do that. Um, but again, like this, this, this spam and bot abuse prevention is, is kind of like a law of authority. So the, the having concurrent, um, having the concurrent recommendation system is really important for ensuring like people can filter bots, but also they don't have the ability to filter you know, everything. So with Facebook, because it's centralized, I can completely remove my profile from the web, but not from their servers. If you want to delete your account, can you? Yeah, so um, with uh, Polycentric, you can, uh, you can ask things to be deleted. But obviously, this is not like, um, you know, someone can always choose to not delete something. And that's not like a part of the protocol. The protocol says that stuff will be deleted. Um, but... You know, if you know, if I if I screenshot your Twitter, if I if I you know crawl your Facebook account with, you know, wget or something, you know, that data can always be there. Um, in a distributed system, that's a little that's a little harder because there's a lot more people who might be storing something. Mm -hmm. um, so, like by default, you know, if the, if you ask for something to be deleted, there's a message, and the the clients will will just automatically delete the stuff and and leave a proof that it was deleted. But you know, just like Twitter, you know, you people you see this, you know, Twitter is a centralized platform, and people. People delete stuff on all the time. Yeah, and people screenshot. Yeah, it all for everyone the time. that matters, like, it's, it's nothing but screenshots, and there's sites that archive it. So it's it's kind of like that. Uh, but you can you can always ask. Uh, so if you know if you post uh, if you make a typo or something, like you can delete that post and you know post a new one. And um, for my resident uh, regular with very difficult questions, this sounds like a derivative idea that many other people have come up with. Why would this be any better? Or why would I want to use it? You want to use it to see the pictures that I post on it. But uh, they're for the serious answer. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it depends on, like, like, I don't know, what, what projects in particular you might be thinking of. Like, um, there, there are projects that have done distributed stuff before. Um, you know, there, there's, there's Mastodon, there's Scuttlebutt. Um, you know, they just have, uh, like, different architectures that have different implications about how they work. Uh, we, we've kind of really optimized for making sure servers aren't trusted, uh, making sure, um, you know, having some way to deal with spam, uh, multi-device, that kind of stuff, and I really just think it's a, kind of a sweet spot where we have we have a slightly different answer than, than any other project for, for dealing with these issues. What prevents bots from manipulating the recommended listings without turning things into an echo chamber when one server detecting bot content does not mean other servers deleted too? Um, yeah, I mean, naively, naively, uh, nothing. Uh, if you think one server, but if, like if a server does a better job of filtering out bots and you want them to do that, then you just use that one instead. Like. You know, we're really trying to incentivize some kind of, you know, easy competition here between providers of, uh, of this filtering. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like, someone has to be good at filtering out spam. And, um, you know, we just want that to be able to happen without placing too much trust in them. Yeah, and not having, like, one, a, a, a trust and safety group or, you know, the person that bought the company being the one that decides that. Yeah, I mean, if you know, if someone changes their their policies, like you should be able to use a different one. Um. Oh, I don't see any legislation against someone not deleting data upon user request. What is forcing Facebook to honor your request? Uh, in the U.S., nothing. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I also I I assume they just don't honor it. Um, it be, I, I'd uh, assume that nothing. Like you, if you're using Google Hangouts and you say don't save conversation history, I'm just assuming all that shit is saved and stored for I, future blackmail. You know, probably in the backups at the very least uh, somewhere. It's being I mean, saved. deleting stuff in these, these, you know, big distributed systems, uh, you know, at, at Facebook or whatever is probably quite difficult. You know, data is all over the place. Okay, let's see if we have some interesting questions here. I'm going to scroll up and down, and if you have interesting questions, do post them. I think the stream will be demonetized. But you know what? That image, you know what? I may repost this edited so that I still have an account. Contagious laughter. This is difficult. Yes. Audio is out of sync. Yes, it is. I'm using Jack off audio in Linux. I mean Jack audio. I think if I had it right the first time. It's always something with Jack audio. Anyway. Uh, 
Mastodon is an echo chamber of hell. I've never tried Mastodon. Yeah. Why this over Mastodon? Huh. I mean, one of the things that you kind of notice about, um, you see this with a lot of things um, where they're more, you know, usually, especially the non-corporate things, ironically, um, you know, people, when they, they moderate them, be it a Minecraft server or a, a forum or something, you know, they're frequently more arbitrary than um, a lot of the big companies are, which uh, I find kind of, uh, kind of ironic. I mean, Mastodon has this a lot where, you know, the moderation is kind of, uh, you know, all, all over the place, depending on your instance. Um, I mean, they have to be accountable at some level. Like, yes, Twitter, uh, I mean, people can argue that Twitter had a left-wing bias for a very long period of time, um, that maybe the people on the trust and safety team were not exactly fair and balanced. But, like, they, at the end of the day, they were a company that wanted to make money that was... You, that had to deal with you know hundreds of millions of users. Yeah, and it's, I mean, di it's different when you're like the dictator of a server that has 20 or 40 people on it. Honestly, I, I mean, I think like if if I run a server, like I want to be able to host the content I want on it. Like I don't want to be, be forced to run stuff that I might disagree with. Um, if but, you're personally running a server, you probably are going to be a bit more of a dictator than yeah. somebody that has to answer to a board of directors, shareholders, everything else. One of the, one of the issues with these uh, federated systems like email or Mastodon is that. You know the servers themselves kind of have this re have these reputations um, between them, and like a fundamental part of how these things work is the servers talk to each other, and you see this with email uh, a lot, and even more so with Mastodon, where like, uh, you know, servers kind of uh, disagree with each other on moderation policy, which you know they're right to do so, uh, but they end up just like banning each other, like the whole server, and so you might like you know when when someone gets banned, uh, you know one one person can get. Uh, you know, tens of thousands of people banned as, you know, it's like, you know, if, if you're on a different server than I am, you know, the trend is towards this, like, uh, fragmentation of the network where, you know, in theory, we should have been able to talk to each other, but because our server operators don't like each other, uh, because of our, you know, moderation policy differences, um, you know, we can't communicate anymore. And so that's just, uh, e email is like this too, like, if you try to, you know, the, the big server, the big email operators kind of, like, trust each other a little bit to, to, you know, receive content so that's not spam. But, you know, if you try to run your own email server, like, in theory you can. Uh, everything goes do. to spam, though. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's very easy to make everything go to spam accidentally um, because you're not one of the big players, right? You're not, you're not in the cabal. You're not in the federation cabal that uh, decides what's, uh, what's allowed and what's not. So um, because what would be the user experience difference? Like, if I'm on a server that is banned on Mastodon versus... If I'm a member of, uh, if I'm joined onto numerous polycentric servers and they all hate each other, yeah. So if, if you're on like with a polycentric, like the servers like don't even have to talk to each other. Um, like you know, if your client, if my client knows that your stuff's on this server and this server, and my stuff's on a different server, um, like it doesn't matter. Like my client, my browser just connects to the other, you know, connects to your servers, and like these these other servers don't even know that the other ones exist, uh, so they don't have to worry about. Um, they don't have to worry about like blocking each other because that's not even like a meaningful dynamic in, in the system. Like, is it fair like, to say that this entire that uh, that the core of your philosophy of how to put all this together was a distrust for server operators and of the centralized authority in general? Yeah, I mean, I don't. Um, I, I I just want to make software that I actually wanted to use, which is uh, not very much software. Um, I definitely don't like the model of. You know, uh, with, with most things, it's usually like, oh, we don't like this guy in charge, and then some other, per but, you know, we want this other guy in charge. You know, I just, um, I just don't want to be in the situation of, you know, picking a different, a different tyrant or something. Uh, you know, I'd really prefer to limit. You know, the, Google used to have this motto, like, don't be evil. Uh, I vastly prefer the motto, can't be evil, uh, and that, like, the server operator is just, you know, demonstrably over, over, over history of... Yeah, that was what Ian Clark things. was saying, uh, the founder of Freenet. He was saying, we were reading over this Reddit post, I, I read it to him, where somebody was saying, you know, my friend had bet that within like two or four years this man would be in prison or dead, uh, you know, to, in order to take certain contents on the network down or figure out who posted it. And he said, like, you know, he said, yes, the reason that I'm sitting here today is because I do not have the ability to do that.
it's not that I don't find some of this stuff morally objectionable. It's just I have absolutely no say. It's like I can't remove content from my own network. Yeah, like I, I don't want the authority to decide what happens on the network. Because it makes a um, mess. Like you're gonna have so many people trying to twist your arm, have a gun to your head, destroy your life, if you have the power or the ability to limit it. But if you create something where there's no power or authority to limit it, it's, there's nothing for me to do. Because everybody's gonna have their own idea of what they find to be, uh, you know, to be something that's too offensive or beyond the pale or whatever in their particular case. Like, even with Google, don't be evil. Like who defines evil? That's a tough one. All right, let's see. Chrome is garbage. What? That's why Chrome eats so much of my RAM? That's loud. <laughs> yes. Hanging paintings is uh, much more work than it used to be. Uh, I was told there'd be a cat. Oh, you were clickbaited. Yes. Is this open source? Yes, it is. And I included a link in the description down below. Okay, this I all read. You all read this. Oh, YouTube does this thing where it skips ahead if I scroll too much. Mm -hmm. Fellow Wagner High School grad, 2008. Uh, were you there when Mr. Pelinkovic was an English teacher? Or were you there when he quit being an English teacher and became a dean? He was awesome. I hope he still works there. I hope you got to have Mr. Pelinkovic as an English teacher. He's like the only good teacher in that whole shithole of an island. Uh, I care. Deleting my data and don't track data X requests enables flags at Google Facebook in an attempt to hide the collected data from users. Huh. Why don't you try Pipewire instead of Jack? Honestly, every time I mess with audio in Linux, I just kind of want to, you know. You know. Pipewire is, is the only audio switch over I've had where it, it, it did just work. Okay, um, I, will, I will change to that. Um. Yeah, if, you, if you actually want to see the clusterfuck that I have for audio, um, I, will, I will post it for you. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, here, here you go. Bada, bada bing. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this mess. Look at this freaking mess. This is absolutely... Yes. Linux audio, okay. But back to our regularly scheduled programming. Where's my chat window? Eh, okay. Laughing my fucking ass off, jack off audio, much like Futo, but with an A instead of an O. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm very original, man. It's bad how Facebook have their little embedded tags over so many websites to track your every movement. Luckily, Polycentric does not track me as I go across the internet, right? I don't think I have, there, there are zero <laughs> analytics in the system. I have, yeah, so you, uh, how many users people are using it? You have no idea. That's awesome. I mean, I can guess. I'm not really sure, though. <laughs> it's, it's cool that you can't, or you don't have the, let's see. Oh, God. Oh, where was I? Elon man bad spurgs are funny. I mean, the idea here is it sh you shouldn't have any specific person that should have that can have control over the entire system. What are your yeah. thoughts on the Twitter files? Some are interesting. Some are cope. I don't know. Not ex not exciting for me. What were you gonna say? Sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, I tell you. Is Lewis decorating the shop? Yes, we're hanging paintings. Lots of paintings being hung. What is Polycentric doing different than Mastodon? It makes it more interesting, it's just they can't restrict... Okay, I think you answered that one already a yeah. few minutes ago. The server operators cannot destroy the experience for people if they don't get along. Will we be able to use the site to sell drugs, such as the Pirate Bay, to torrenting? I really want... Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, people will be able to... Um, you know, it's open source software. People can uh, run the software for their own purposes. Um, I think... Um, you know, traditional law enforcement will likely have some, some issues with that, uh, much as the Pirate Bay founders did, despite being a distributed protocol. Uh, One of the principles with Fudo software in general is, again, you should have control over your identity, you know, uh, like private public key kind of thing, not logging into a central server. You should be able to start your own server. It should be open source in nature. Like, these fundamental principles are principles that would allow any of the software that's created here to be used for amazing good, 
but it can also be used for bad as well. Again, the, the, the idea with, with freedom is um, people are going to do bad things with freedom, but they're also going to be, be able to do good things with freedom. And the more that you limit it so that a bad person cannot, cannot do something bad under any circumstance, uh, the more you are ceding your freedom and control to somebody else, which is something that's just kind of goes against the ethic and the idea here. Yeah, I mean, this is um, the double-edged sword of uh, this kind of software, or open source software in general. Um, um, let's see. How thoroughly do these companies wipe old server drives with our cache profile data before it gets auctioned off to some random buyer? Um, I, I think most companies uh, destroy I'm the drives. Uh. I'm, I'm sure, like, the, the larger the company gets, I get, like, there's the whole meme of, like, you know, selling data to advertisers and all that, but, like, once you're at the level of having a company that's worth, you know, $50 billion, I just don't think that they care that much. Like, they're not going to risk you know, massive data breaches and absolute destruction of their reputation to make an extra $8 off of, you know, your dick pics. Yeah, also, I mean, they usually, at least most of the big companies monetize by selling access to users, uh, not the data directly. Yeah. Like targeted advertising. That's a big misconception, and I've heard you talk about that, which is important. Like, do you... This idea that large company, that all these large companies are always selling your data rather than access. Can you explain the I difference mean, between inside, that? Inside like random apps in the Play Store, there's tons of, of shady companies which do collect things and, and sell the data. But most of the, the really big companies, like their value as a company is the ability to deliver advertisements to people. And you know, they want to maintain the edge on uh, you know, that targeted advertising. Um, you know, it's kind of like their secret sauce. Uh, you know, Facebook is kind of like this where uh, you know, they do take some precautions to, uh, have, they haven't always been perfect, but they take some precautions to make sure, you know, not everything is leaking all the time. They really, like, if you try to crawl it or whatever, they get pretty mad at you. They don't want to, uh, uh, or, you know, if you, like, have some, some game or something. It used to be, you know, you could just get all the information, but now, not even, like, even if you opt in, um, a lot of stuff won't be shared with third parties. Like, what Facebook sells is the ability to, you know, target an ad as close to Lewis Rossman as possible. Um, and um, you know that's where they make their money. Like, yeah, there's you know. this thing where the, like there's a lot of reasons to be mad at many of these companies, but sometimes that boils over into this low resolution populist rage where people will substitute small terms like that. But those things do matter. And one thing I always appreciate about you is you always tend to like you you to bring people back to sanity when those discussions are going on. And not the like the Richard Stallman let me interject me, but like you're you're willing to say well, well no they do these things that are bad, but here's they're probably that that's not actually 100% correct and like I don't know. you're, you're like level-headed with it because a lot of the people that that are interested in creating these types of platforms or are interested in these types of programs tend to be for lack of a better word kind of schizo -y. yeah or, or pretty paranoid yes um, I mean it's almost better to be on that side of things than not because uh, you know there are quite a few things out there that actually are data mining you actually are tracking you everywhere um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think the selling data line just, just, uh, sounds, sounds good. I think, you know, it's, it's very easy to repeat. Um, I gave Pipewire a shot last spring and it wasn't working well with Reaper. I'll give it a go again. I will give it a try again. I just, it took me so long to learn how to use Carla and Jack and all this other stuff. I just don't want to really learn something else, but I, sh I should, I probably should. Lots of paintings, but the Rembrandt's turned out a bit too large, so the person in the background is trimming them a bit. <laughs> yes, we are hanging Rembrandt's. Uh. Any final last questions for Harpo? Huh? All right, with that being said, again, just another plug for the fellowship program over here. There is a link down below to this. Again, if you are making interesting software that is focused on t um, tech freedom in general, you have a cool idea for a piece of software that'll make the world a better place, we will pay you to work on that software, up to $80,000 for you and your team, free housing, uh, free airfare to Austin, Texas, mentorship from other programmers like Harpo, mentorship from Aaron, who, you know, a programmer for WhatsApp, for Yahoo Games, everything else. There's a lot of experience here. and. Uh, you get, again, the only strings are the software is open source. It does not you see the user as the product. It doesn't exploit or abuse the user. No crypto scammy shit. And that's 
Maybe a little crypto scam. No, no crypto scammy shit. Uh, that, that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for taking the time and yeah, coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Awesome. All right. Oh, where can uh, uh, I included a link to his GitLab down below if you want to find him there. Absolutely. And a link to the Polycentric website. And I am going to clean up my profile before I leave tonight because so people may actually view this shit. Anyway.